Chaos Rain. Chaos Rain presents Home is Where the Birth Is with special guest Talise. Broadcast December the 20th, 2020. Enjoy.
expressed on Talk Real Solutions hosted by Tyrone Thompson at TalkRealSolutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information or any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an as-is basis. In a world where there's crime, corruption, violence, murder, rape, theft, and all forms of atrocities that plague the world in which we live in today, what you're witnessing, we are living in a state of chaos, and it'll take much greater or extremer chaos to restore the order in which the world we live in today. Hello, black people and people. This is chaos here. And today, we're going to take a little nice step back and a very much educational piece on today's podcast slash stream. Um, before I go into the topic at hand, I would like everybody to go to Talk Real Solutions on the website. There you find Three Point Plan, Black Banks, yada, yada, yada. And also on the website, you find the latest news articles that's going around the world and also what's going on in politics, and all the information is right on the website itself. So don't be hesitant. Check us out on TalkRealSolutions.com. And also there's a donation tab where you could donate as little as $5 or more, you know. And it, it's good. It's pretty good um, to see people, not only if they take like of the website, if they go to it, but also um, – like I say, um, if you can contribute to the stability or eventually growth of this channel or show, it will be much appreciated. Um, you could also find us on Facebook. You type in Talk Real Solutions on Facebook. I believe there's a like page and a private chat that you could participate if you hit the like button on the the page on Facebook itself. Um, the chat room began popping up there. We'd be talking about a lot of things. We'd be talking about current events, certain things about should people do this, do that, um, who's running policies, certain things, and all that type of information is being going back and forth in the private chat on Talk Real Solutions. So if you want to be in the private chat, you know, just hit the like button. You get me? <sighs> So you'll find us on Facebook as well. Also, how can I say this? You could um, follow us on YouTube as well. Let me see if I can find it on YouTube. Time just shared it. Um, yes. Talk Resources on YouTube, so type in Talk Resources on YouTube. You'll find streams of this show and other shows that be airing on Talk Resolutions roughly seven days a week. Some days it might be five, seven, or four, depending on who's airing. But mostly it's a weekly channel, so, you know, just subscribe, hit the top bell if you want to know what's going on and what is being current or what's being said on the channel itself. Type in Talk Resolutions. But enough of all that. Let's get into the subject at hand, Aspie. Tonight's subject, I present to you, Chaos Rain Presents. Home is where the birth is. This is 
a title from an up-and-coming author of a book title, Home is Where the Birth Is. So i like to bring in, for the very first time on Talk Real Solutions, Miss Tessa Homebirth. Hello, Tessa. Can you hear me? Hi, it's Elise, and yes, Elise. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, Elise, yes. That's okay. Let me see if anybody can hear me. Um, let's check. Go ahead. You can talk a little bit. Um, well, before you say anything, of anything, we like to go back in a moment of time before we jump forward into the present and into the future. So tell the people for the very first time a little bit about yourself. Um, Talise. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Talise. I um, am the author of a book called Home is Where the Birth Is, the stories of my six home births and how you can do it too. Um, I'm a wife, a mother of six. I have homeschooled all six of my children, and two of them were twins full-term in breach. And after my sixth child, um, a lot of people always asking me about, you know, can you tell us how you home birthed and why you chose to do that? And so still, you know, trying to individually tell each person my birth story. I said, well, why don't I just write a book about it and, and, you know, put them all together and also include breastfeeding and proper postpartum care and my miscarriages. So that way there is a one-stop shop for information, women who were interested and wanted to be inspired um, for information. So I also have I have my book. I also have my website, www.talisehomebirthqueen.com, where I also offer classes on home birthing. I have consultations for personal home births. My husband also has a class called um, Home Birthing for Dads. And I am on mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, I'm Talise Home Birth Queen. On Instagram, Talise the Home Birth Queen. And I daily post um, positive images and encouraging information um, because my mission is just to help renormalize what is a normal thing, renormalizing home birthing, breastfeeding, and getting the proper postpartum care, which, you know, care after you have birth, give birth to the baby. Mm. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And I check my other end. People could hear the, the stream from the YouTube, so it's good. It's good. It's yeah. working. All right. Um, I'm going to ask some more a little depth about the home burp section in a second. Um, also, to let everybody know, you are um, the daughter of the great Maul and I think Yad Baruti as well? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> and for those who don't know who Maul Baruti is, he is a black teacher, author, father, of the many publication books. Mostly he has an institution called Occupant Institution, which you can find, you can Google Occupant Institution, which he published, right now I think he published almost 20 books. I could be wrong, I gotta double check, I, I lost it's, count. It's like 27 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and one of the books that I have bought personally, um, uh, I can't pull it right now because I'm on the phone, but you know, one of them, I, I, actually, the very first book I remember buying was The Feminization of the Black Male, a very thick book. It's like a textbook, <laughs> if you think about it. It's like, I don't know if you ever read one of your father's books before. Um, yes, I've read them all. <laughs> you read all of them? Or do you have to read them all, or you just say, you know, I just, I'll just read some? But, well, he started he started writing when I was in high school, and I was attending their school, Ankerman Institute. And so at that time, it was required reading. But as I grew up, I still continued to read them after that. Okay, 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 okay. And you know, that book came out 17 years ago. And I think, I, I, might, I could be wrong, you can correct me. You, that's how long you've been gone from high school. Kind of if you went to any other higher education after high school. Am I right? Yeah, I, I was only in community college for a hot second. But yeah, I was. I graduated in 03 from high school. So yeah. mm-hmm. Yes, I know. And you know how I, you know how, you know how I know that? Well... <laughs> I ain't gonna tell everybody because you know people, y'all, y'all can look her up and say she, it, it's revealed. The information's there. Don't worry about it. I, y'all, y'all know how old she is. You know y'all could check that out. I'm not going to that. But yeah, um, yeah, that that book, yeah, oh yeah, it's very, and that's something right. Finish read that book. To be honest with you, I I gotta get back to reading. I might just do a series on that book. I'm still mm-hmm. contemplating that. I'm waiting till it's old enough 
because a lot of people don't know this information exists, but I had to figure out how I'm going to play out. But nonetheless, you know, this is the daughter of the great Ma Broody, and I think your mother's name Yaya. I mean, Yaya. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, Broody. Yeah. Yeah, Bertie, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're friends on Facebook. But, yeah, these are great people. Um, so if y'all are not familiar with the Akaban Institution, check out for yourself. I might be able to check if I did a stream with your um, father. I might have. I could be wrong because it's been a long time. I've been doing this for a long time, at least. I've been doing this podcast again now, and it's going to be five years. I think it might be five years of this day or a few days ago. But I'll, I'll do a separate show on this, on that, with my next guest. Yeah, but it's been a long time since I'm, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, so I might have had him on. But nonetheless, this is, you know, the daughter. And it's, are you the only daughter? Or he had, I'm they, the they only had... child. I'm the only child, period. <laughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, we're millennials, so. We, we, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, but on to the, um, the chorus. What is, I would like to say, the greatest fear for a lot of women in America mm-hmm. concerned about home births? Especially mm-hmm. black women. I know mm-hmm. we're not no accustomed to getting burps at home now for the last whew, maybe forty years, maybe thirty, right. or maybe, maybe, maybe almost forty-five years, maybe longer. Right. Since integration, but I know right. there was a part in our history that we couldn't go to hospitals. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So everything that I do straight out our home, mm-hmm. give birth, mm-hmm. and our children didn't go to see no doctors like that so right so my question what is the fear now for the average woman today from the last century now moving on to 21st century of going the route of giving the home births again well I would say that propaganda has incited a lot of fear so from the time you're in your mother's womb everybody if your mother has access to movies or TV She's probably seen a movie or a show that had someone who was pregnant in there who was screaming and hollering and it's always, you know, it's supposed to be the most terrible thing on the planet and the dad is in the room painting or she's squeezing his hand to death or just a number of, you know, it's just supposed to be a horrendous experience. But like you said, this is hospitals is a new phenomenon, just period. It's a, it's a new phenomenon. So just like we hear stories about how, Women are having babies everywhere if there's not a hospital, when they're trying to make it to the hospital. I just saw a video the other day. This woman ended up having a baby in the elevator. She was headed to the hospital, didn't make it. People have babies in the cars. Headed to the hospital, don't make it. Because the thing is, a baby is going to come out when it's ready. It doesn't matter where you are at. So we've just been programmed to think that that experience is supposed to be painful. And that's only because it's profitable for the people who are in the entertainment industry and the people in the hospital. Hospitals don't make money if patients don't come. And if you haven't told people the reason to come, they're not going to come unless it's an emergency. And we've been mm-hmm. trained to think that birth is an emergency. There are some emergency cases, but in general, birth is not an emergency. It's a natural function that happens. Mm. I see. You know, I never really looked at it like that. Um, can I watch certain movies? I never really analyzed movies, even back then, and I should analyze now because, you know, when you're older, you could really take a critical analysis of what you're watching. Mm-hmm. Um, from my experience, because I don't watch movies like that no yeah. more like like that, or watch TV in general for the last decade, oh, I mean, yeah. post, for mm-hmm. a decade, because we have internet now, so there are ways right. to select it for what you watch. But my mm-hmm. thing is that, that the propaganda machine is very real in regards to program people what to do, what to say and how to carry on with life. Um, okay. I think the more the complications of a lot of women that won't want to stay home, pay for a doula, or just give birth right into their bathtubs or whatever, it's mm-hmm. because they have fear that, you know, something might happen, something might go wrong. Exactly. Uh, and don't know say that, and probably you can get more detail of this, because um, we're going to go into book people, not in all depth, but just enough for those who are listening for the first time. And for the call number for tonight's show is 712-770-4160. The access code is 977-194-POUND. I repeat, 712-770-4160. Access code 977-194-POUND. And the fear alone will make people 
even when women feel that they're going to be caring, like they feel that they're about to do, mm-hmm. they will sometimes wake their significant other if they have one or they just get in a car and drive to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I feel one of the weirdest cases that I've noticed is, I guess, with the hospitals. No, before we say hospitals, let's say it's in general, that a lot of women, they feel that the doctors will tell them when their baby's about to be due <laughs> and they give them a time to. And to me, I find that very ironic. Say so how you could interrupt and tell how nature's going to dictate when a child's born. Some women are concerned, at least, that the baby doesn't get, is not ready after, what, 39 weeks? I don't know if that's yeah. the some say they might pass a few days after and at least they'd be concerned, like, is the baby alive or breathing? But I'm mm-hmm. thinking, say, if someone's really dead, trust mm-hmm. me, you will know as a woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it goes back, how connected are our women today with their children in this type of environment? That's now, the question I just Okay. I want to answer that, and I want to say one more thing to the last question you just asked me. Okay. And also, the, those women who have watched those movies and shows are programmed, right? Mm-hmm. And so they think it's supposed to hurt. So when they go to the hospital and it does hurt because they're given Pitocin, which is a, a drug that speeds up contractions, which mm-hmm. makes – it's like it's, – it, what I compare it to – Is that a heart rate? Is that no, rate, no, no. Rate? Okay. It, it okay. speeds up the rate. What happens when you're giving birth is basically your body is – slowly going to be releasing the baby, but it's, it's, it is a process by which your body, your vagina opens up so that the baby can come out, can come out, excuse me. But okay. the thing is, your body has what people call contractions, I call waves. It's a, it's a slow and gradual build so that your body is prepared for it. But like, like, for example, if you're preparing for a marathon race, you don't just hop up and say, hey, I'm about to go run a marathon because you'll be in extreme pain. So that's what happens. They give women in the hospital, if you're not, you know, moving along fast enough, they say, well, let me give you this because this bed is time for the next person I need to come in here. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a business. Mm-hmm. So it's painful, right? So then that woman tells the next woman, birth is painful. And they tell their children, birth is painful. And their sons and their daughters. So I've had an incident where I was pregnant and I had a, I had a student. And this girl is seven, and she was. I'm telling her about a home birth or whatever, and she's like, that's going to hurt. Now I'm sitting here saying it's going to be peaceful and beautiful. She's seven, already telling me it's going to hurt. So the wow. the programming is, is is through and through. It's not just, you know, the TV. It's, the TV is it's a, what is it, a cause and effect? It's creating the chain of that. And I'm so sorry, but I'm trying to remember the question you just asked. <laughs> no, no, take your time, take your time, because this is, this is everything is we have to really – Analyze it and take it within, understand mm-hmm. it for its entirety, and laying the background to why the propaganda is instilled into us, especially to the women, that there's going to be pain. There's going to be some form of struggle you're going to go through, releasing this baby out of your body. And don't say life is what it is. I mean, there's nothing that, that comes to earth that you're going to feel there's no pain, depending on the woman. Cause I heard some women give birth with no pain. Yeah, some women have orgasms. You can have an orgasm while you're giving birth. See, oh, I didn't know that. That's that. new. That's new. I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah, people, that. people don't talk about that. You know what I'm saying? But there, there's, it does not have to hurt at all to give birth. It does not have to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I would like to say mind over matter and how you're coming into the situation. If you're expecting pain, that's what you're going to get. Mm. If you're expecting, it's like, it's like, you know how if you say you start thinking on a particular kind of vehicle and then you see that vehicle everywhere all of a sudden, whatever you're mm-hmm. thinking about, you're going to attract. You see it all the time and experience all the time. That's how mm-hmm. every human mind works. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. The answer is that question. And I think you answer the second question. Um, you know, it's funny because you, you, you got right into the orgasmic part of it. Um, I was looking for IG and they are, I guess, um, I don't know if this is a weird question, but I'm going to ask anyway, that can a, ma- can a male with his significant other, his wife, baby mama, whatever you want to call it, that um, can they engage in intercourse while the woman's still pregnant and, you know, she gets the still frills and orgasm? 
Yes, a lot of a lot of people use that as you know, there's tricks of the trade. So some women who, okay, I'm I'm tired of carrying the baby, then they have sex, and the semen helps to soften the. I want to say vertex. Please don't, please anyone. If I'm if I'm incorrect, don't fault me. No, but no, it softens no. everything and makes it easier for the baby to come out soon. So it's it's oh. people certainly use that, but during during actual labor, there are techniques your spouse or your mate can use. Like like you if you saw the picture where the man had his hand on the woman's breast and he's massaging mm-hmm. the slippers, that helps. Our, our whole body is connected. So your vagina is not a separate entity from your face and your lips. So like kissing also, that also mm-hmm. helps open everything up. And a lot of people like mm-hmm. to say, you know, what, what you use to get the baby in, you can use those same things to get the baby out. Oh, wow. And that's all explained in your book as well? Yes, I talk about orgasmic birth in my books, yes. You know, I think you're the first woman, and I, I could be wrong, but because I don't read women um, writing books about, you know, home births like that mm-hmm. on the average, but I think your book, and in my age people, the book's not a long read. It's like over 100 pages at most. And I, that, read it, I wrote, I'm sorry, I wrote it very simply so anybody could read it. So it, I just, I've seen a lot of home birth books that are very technical, and that I'm not trying to down those because some people enjoy reading like that. But I want it okay. to be super simple so that anybody can pick it up and read. A child, a grown-up, you're very educated. You have very little education. Excellent. 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 Y'all hear that? So don't complain and say, oh, it, my head hurts. You know you know that saying what Amos Wilson said back in the day when he was around. When, I, so when black people take a book and they start turning page, it all of a sudden, they get migraines and their heads start to hurt reading page. I'm going to call it sentence after sentence paragraph. And I'll say the reason why your head hurts because you're not using that brain properly. Mm-hmm. You know? and it's supposed to hurt because you're focusing and try to analyze with your left or right brain, wherever brain you want to call it, is trying to synthesize that information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the way how police writes it, is to make it so you're able to synthesize it much easier in typical terms how you can relate to the information as a woman or any adult or non-adult to read it. Right. So that way you get the best possible outcomes if you're going this home birth journey, which I have no problem with a lot of women today going home birth. Matter of fact, I go in further. I've noticed certain non-black women go out the way to take on get home births more than people amongst our race, our culture here in America, you know? Yeah. Fortunately, it seems to me like it's a growing. I, I see a lot of women who are becoming doulas, and I feel that it's growing. It, it, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, like when veganism and vegetarian first took off, you know, at first it was just a very few people, but now we see, you know, you can go into Whole Foods or you can go into, you know, your local grocery store and see vegan and vegetarian options. So I think that's just where we are right now with the whole home birth thing is that it's it's a growing trend that's happening. So unfortunately, Mm -hmm. in this country, usually white people are, excuse me, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. are get information first. You know, they have more access to information that we don't necessarily have or we haven't tapped into. And so, you know, Unfortunately, sometimes it takes for them to get on something. Then we say, oh, they're doing it. Well, let's do it too. And I really don't care how black women are getting it. I just want them to get the information because mm-hmm. it's safe for you. I hear women, all uh, black women and men, oftentimes talk about all the women and the children who are dying and the mortality rate in the hospitals. And it's like, that's not your only option to have children. The ho- mm-hmm. I mean, it's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. explore another option. You can still explore home birth and say, okay, yeah, that's still not for me. I don't feel safe. That's why some people choose to have midwives and doulas because if you are still nervous, even after your studies and your reading and your videos and the things that you're trying, you can get a midwife or a doula who have been trained and you interview my suggestion so that way you feel mm-hmm. more comfortable. Mm-hmm. But there are alternatives. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think the resources here, I mean, a lot of people don't want to look at the alternatives just to um, go by to get, to make sure you have a, what we call a successful birth, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, it's interesting because something came to my mind now, question. In regardless to the age of women, do you feel is much beneficial for a woman, 
I guess that's not over 35 that they should try to have their children, if they seek and have children, have them as early as possible, or they should wait, like, real late, like, in their late 30s and stuff. I don't know if you can want to answer that question. No. No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> well, I would say, you know, to each his own, and you got to do what's best for you. But mm-hmm. I think we can all agree that our bodies are in a healthier state the younger we are. We've eaten less bad foods. We've had less bad air pollution. We've had less bad, you know, just mm-hmm. environmental foolishness that's out here that causes wear and tear on our bodies. So it's, just, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, when young women have a baby and their body snaps back real quick. It's like they didn't have to do any exercise or anything. They're young. <laughs> their, mm-hmm. their body is youthful and able to do it. So I would suggest that. But, you know, people have their own lives and their own things going on. So that might mm-hmm. not necessarily always be the case. But I decided to do that myself. I started having children in my 20s because I know I didn't mm-hmm. want to be an older person chasing around small children. That was just my particular preference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what was your average age range when you had your? Fr- you said the first children you had was twins, or what was it like? No. One, what? Okay. I had my my children now are nine, seven. My twins are six, and then mm-hmm. I have a three and a two year old. So they're all very close. Nine, seven. Okay. I could well from my math, if I could count properly, I would say roughly in your mid twenties you start having children. That's that's cool. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, you, it, see, I had to be calculized, you know. I had to really calculate my no, height. Because, because, and, 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 think, and think about it. To be honest with you, you are actually on the mark, on the average right now on the United States of women that is actually giving birth. It's roughly 26.7 or 8. So oh. that is actually the range right now. That is the last, the last time I checked, the average right now in America of women that's giving birth for the first children. That's mm-hmm. the age range. Oh, and, okay. and, and I was surprised because usually I heard people were giving birth at 30, which you can still do because you're not high risk until like 35 or after 35. But the fine that women are still giving birth before 30 is a good sign. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I said, thumbs up to that. You know, because <laughs> I, I, like I said, women don't understand, especially with women, our sisters, and you could probably answer this, that we don't take fitness really serious in our communities. Not only the men, but the women. Because let's say you are, not you, but let's say women are right now, America is very obese, and our women are up in there in percentage than other groups of women. And I find it very ironic that, okay, you, you're trying to look appealing. You're supposed to keep yourself a certain health. So mm-hmm. just in case you want, let's say, find a mate and let you get married and have children, hopefully, that's the goal, hopefully, and most people are thinking like that, that you right. want to put your health at the number one priority, that, yeah, you could have children when you're very big. Like, and, you know, women are packing, like, enough weight. I can't go in numbers to that. But, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's serious. Trust me, I, I'm going to get cussed out right now for this. But, like I said, that um, the, the, the more you try to keep so healthy before you get a little older, the better. So that way, if you do give birth, and mind you, the, the children alone, because you have twins, so obviously they put on, like, an extra more than 30 pounds on you because, to if they're boys and girls, I'm not sure if there's a difference between weight between girls and boys on the womb. I heard a woman tell me this that um, they could tell what the child is going to be by the mother. So if you look at the mother and she has like a big womb, that's it could be a boy. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. You could probably correct me. I thought that's something that don't make sense, but I don't know. That they there's could tell what they have. Of, yeah, there's all kind of wide sales, how you can tell. And you have people who swear by it, and some people like that never works for me. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but like I said, a woman that is very heavy, you're gonna put on an extra thirty pounds, and depending on your health, um, that you could easily snatch back after the baby come on the average, depending on your health. Now, mm-hmm. mind you, some women they don't get that lucky; they might just yeah. put on it and keep it. And mm-hmm. eventually, you get, you know, if you have more, you're gonna put more and more weight. The point is, is that the emphasis of health that you want to put yourself in best. And mind you, the doctors will tell you that you should keep yourself as healthy as possible, especially if you're planning to give birth, you know, mm-hmm. at least. Because right. one thing women don't understand, once you're pregnant, they ought to check everything. They ought to check you if you have sugar problems, you know what I mean, diabetes, that's what I call it, the sugar, the sugar, <laughs> the sugar. And, have, and, and everything else to make sure everything's on tap because anything 
after you give birth, sometimes you, it will lead some complications on your health long term. Mm-hmm. I heard one woman never had diabetes until she gave birth to her second child. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it varies. So to let people, yeah. not, I'm not telling people to fear, but you have to understand that the possibilities if you're going to be mothers in the future, for those that's going to listen to this. Exactly. Got, and I, I want to address the eating, if you don't mind. Yeah, I go, ahead. go ahead. Go sometimes ahead. Sometimes women take it a little too far in terms of I'm eating for two. Okay. So they're just eating and eating and eating like that weight is still not going to be there. And then some women say, well, I'll just nurse after the baby comes and it'll get rid of all the weight. And that's not necessarily the case either. So what you're saying is a very good, important point to not just eat anything. But, yeah, we, you know, sometimes women have cravings, but you got to be mindful of what you are eating Mm -hmm. because that also affects your child and what they want to eat as well. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that is a very important factor to factor in. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, We have one caller. Before I open the mic, just to see what this person has a question. Mm-hmm. Um, the call number again for tonight's show is 712-770-4160, access code 977-194-POUND. I repeat, 712-770-4160, access code 977-194-POUND. Tonight's subject, Carol Spring presents, Home is Where the Birth Is, with my special guest, Talise. Now, as I open the line for the first caller. Caller, I open your line. May I ask, who is this? Uh, my name is Adewa. How are you? Hi, Adewa. How are you doing? What's your yes, name, I'm... sister? I didn't Felice. catch your name. Felice. Felice. But Felice. I'm an Adewa, too. I'm not, that's my day, my day of the week I was born on. Same here. <laughs> Same here. Mm. I am calling because I uh, support home birth, and you're a midwife. Is that correct? No, ma'am. And everyone thinks that I'm either a midwife or a doula. I am not. I just wanted to share my personal birth story, so I am not a doula Ooh, or a midwife. Wonderful. Well, if you don't mind, I'll share mine. I had yes, all my ma'am. children at home with the midwife. I live in Detroit, Michigan. Excellent. I had my birth Excellent. at the age of 33, um, okay. and my last at the age of 40. Um, oh, yes, ma'am. And I am in my 60s now. So I am, I, I, I'm an advocate because I believe that Home is where we are supposed to have our children, and we shouldn't take them into foreign places because they pick up a lot of things. And our babies, when they're infants, coming from just being birthed, you want someone to handle your child who loves you and who looks like you. (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. people whisper things to babies when they're infants like that. But anyway, um, home births are good. They're good for the body. And it heals you if you go through the complete gestation and have a vaginal birth. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing and talking to people in my family, young women who are having children, they are not going through the full gestation and having vaginal births. They're having cesareans. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. they don't want to breastfeed. Uh, Mm -hmm. All the breastfeeding pulls the body back together. Um, The uterus, it heals the uterus. Um, It brings everything back together. Um, Mm -hmm. This body was designed, it is perfect. It functions the way it needs to function, and we have to use our bodies. So I am an advocate. I'm glad to hear your voice speaking to this, Mm -hmm. and and we do need to encourage our young people. See, when we go into the hospitals, you you end up spending a lot of money you don't need to. 
because mm-hmm. they don't really want to be patient with you. A home birth, mm-hmm. you can take your time, take a bath, mm-hmm. eat, mm-hmm. laugh, mm-hmm. talk with your family and loved ones, and it's a very relaxed and beautiful experience to have with your family. So mm-hmm. um, I, I'm glad to hear that you're on the line again. And I really, I, I really, my concern is, is what do, how do we share this information with women, young women, because, you know, they're into this, um, I don't know, they don't look at their bodies as temples. You know, they don't, we don't take care of ourselves. And I understand the young people that don't want to have vaginal birth because you have to have a strength, an internal strength. And when I say that, we have muscles that are superficial that's on the outside of our body, but we have deeper muscles within. And so that is what you need to push and 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 you know push that baby through that vaginal tract there so Mm -hmm. um a lot of our young women they look beautiful and everything but i mean they don't exercise and uh, Mm -hmm. very lethargic in terms of just being sedentary sitting in one place not really using the body when i was Mm -hmm. young we ran constantly you know as, as children you know, and then I was active, you know, I, I worked my body. So by the time I was 33, I was ready to settle down. I was ready to have a family because I had done pretty much all that I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. so I was ready mentally. And we have to be ready mentally. It's not, it's not about, you know, laying down and, oh, oops. I got pregnant and, you know, we are not thinking about what the responsibility is with just laying down, you know what I mean? There's responsibility uh-huh. there. But yeah, um, I, 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 I'm glad to hear you, and I don't have a question. I'm sorry. Okay. But I'm glad to hear okay. you. Where are you in – where are you from? In the U.K.? I'm- no, I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Yes, so you had a home birth? Yes, ma'am. All six of my children I had at home. Six. That's mm-hmm. beautiful. And you said you had mm-hmm. a set of twins? Yes, ma'am. They were both and, full term um, and both Greek. They were mm-hmm. both Greek? Yes, ma'am. Wow. And and so your midwife, she she took care of all that through massage. Well, I had with the twins, I only had a doula, and she was really con- what what I say the difference between a doula and a midwife is a, a doula is really more I, I say like a girlfriend. So she's really mm-hmm. there verbally and physically supportive. So you know, telling, encouraging you, you know, rubbing your back. But she's not necessarily doing anything outside of that. Now, my doula saw when my first baby was coming out that it was she was breached, and so she was like, "Okay, you gonna have to slow down, getting her out." But I actually mm-hmm. didn't know I was having twins, <laughs> and so mm-hmm. um, when uh, the second one came out an hour later. She came out with the two placentas at the same time, so it was that was a, a crazy oh, shock. Oh but, wow! <laughs> mm. but, it's them, so. but I wanted hmm. to make say two things about what you said, Oswald, Miss Oswald. Um, one, mm-hmm. you're a hundred percent right about how the hospitals are overcharging, and in fact, mm-hmm. they charge you to have skin to skin, which means that when your baby comes out they automatically take your baby away. So if you want, you have to request and pay extra for them to hand you your baby immediately. What? Is that right? Yes. Well, so this one is, oh, repeat that? I, I, I want to hear that again. Can you say it one more time, please? You are charged in the hospital. You have to request and you are charged when the baby comes out to say, I want skin to skin, meaning the baby comes out, give it to me immediately. Because their natural way of 
life in the hospital is your baby comes out and they take it, they're wiping it, they're doing all this stuff, wrapping it up, and most sometimes, you know, go ahead and whisking it out the room for the vaccinations and all this other stuff and the tests and checkups and all that. At a home birth, you can get your baby immediately for no mm-hmm. extra fee. Mm-hmm. And then I also wanted to make another point. Can you, let's all, whoever's listening, let's all close our eyes and pretend we're asleep in the bed. Mm-hmm. Now, if someone was coming in to wake us up, we have option A. They come in, they, you know, tap us gently, say, you know, good morning, it's time to wake up. They put on some nice little harp music, a violin. You know, they gently pull back the covers. They, you know, slowly open the blinds and say, okay, it's time to wake up. That's option A. Or you have mm-hmm. option B. Someone comes in and says, get up, wake up, throw the covers back. Flash some water on your face. Lift open the blinds. Get up. Get up. So that's how your baby can come into the world. Option A, at home, they're coming out to the water or they're just coming out to a peaceful environment with people like, like Sister Audrey was saying, Ms. Audrey was said, you know, with love. Or they can come out where it's cold, bright light, strangers, people got masks on, you know. Oh, you know, it's beeping, noises, sounds, you know, you get snatched away. So you, you can make the choice of how you want to start your child's life off in a, in a very traumatic fashion because that does stick with you. Or people loving, my mom loves me and is protecting me. This voice I've heard for nine months or however many months is when the ears start developing. It's right there when I come out into this strange place. So I, I just like to put that, that visual on people's mind when they're considering, you know, do I want a hospital or a home birth? Mm-hmm. I personally want to wake up to, you know, the, the peacefulness, personally. And that's just waking up from a sleep, not coming into a completely new environment that I've never experienced right. in my life. Mm, I see. I see. Yeah. You know, that just blew my mind. I, I never thought of that. And normally, I, I think I could be wrong. Usually they charge like 10 grand for the, those those mm-hmm. hospitals just for the birth and profits and all that. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous. And what I, what I like to say is they do the upcharge for the cesarean. They're always trying to upcharge you. Oh, well, mm-hmm. you know, you can, you know, now you can schedule when your babies do. For no, it's nothing wrong with the baby. But mm-hmm. you want to have your baby on the 16th. Come on down and we'll schedule you a cesarean. Oh, things are looking scary. Let's have a cesarean. It's like they, 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 they talk about cesarean like it's nothing. Because it's right. an upcharge. They get more money for it. It's a benefit for them. It's certainly not a benefit for you. No. And, 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 here, and here's the secret with cesarean. Well, a woman told me this. And I know one woman had three kids. And she mm-hmm. said that she got cesarean twice. Mm-hmm. If they made two two times, made three times, I don't know. I lost count. But they tell you straight up, if you continue with this more than twice or three times, depending on mm-hmm. how certain states how they roll, they have to tell you so you can't have no more children. So they, they're actually sterilizing anyway when they Are you cut. serious? No. Well when they keep cutting you when they cut your stomach, they're going to Are cut you it. Serious? Yes. after after more than two times you go come remember, it's an extra fee, but if they know they see you getting pregnant and let's say if you're married or not, right? And you come okay. to the hospital and you're going through that process, mm-hmm. that's gonna let you know say that, you know, you're going if it, if you go, it can be fatal. Where they're going, they're going to scare people, mm-hmm. and say that something's going to happen to you if you keep going. Come here. There's so much to human body. It's not designed to be cut open, and taken baby every every, every time. It's what's mm-hmm. come out your womb. Mm-hmm. When they keep cutting, it, it's caused damage in your stomach, your womb. Yeah. All right. so so imagine. I want like, I want people to listen to me clear. I know women are going to get pushed back, but I don't care. I'm speaking my mind on this. The docs will tell you this, ladies. If you a person that gone through C section more than once, the doctors by law gonna tell you that you're gonna be sterilized if you keep going through that. So there are limits how many times you got children if you're just getting cut open instead of going the natural way because they like you said, Talise, they said hey, you got your baby's not come out right. I want what happen is I keep getting cut open more than once. Mm. But we don't have these thinking. But mm-hmm. you don't know this because you never gave birth in the hospital, which is a good thing. But I'm telling people personally, this is what they're doing. And I'm not even going far. Even everybody knows. We, let me say this to a lot of people that listen. We are now in a process of a depopulation process right now that's been going on for, for almost 50 years, maybe 40, 50 years. 
All these people move now in the 21st century. They're only going to accelerate now. Now, how I know? Because I did a, sh a show on this on my channel last year. And I've noticed that there was a decline of birth rates going around this, this, this decade now. Mm -hmm. And I never understand why I've seen it starting to dip now. Mm -hmm. Are they doing something unnaturally causing a dip? Because something didn't really add up to me. Mm -hmm. Now, how are they going to cut these numbers? I let people determine that by their own research. But, yeah, if you get more than one C-section, after all, doctor's going to tell you, say they're going to recommend you don't go get knocked up again because most likely it's going to be fatal, you know? And so also, do, and, go ahead. and go also ahead. a lot of doctors tell people that once you've had a C-section, you cannot have a vaginal birth after that. You must keep getting a C-section. That's why I tell you say that you're going to be sterilized. I mean, not, not, they're not going to sterilize, like literally tell you they're going to sterilize, but they're going to tell you, say you go, it's, it's going to be fatal. Keep going through this process. You get me? But that's yeah, true. That's there are women who have had C-sections, the first one or whenever, mm -hmm. and they might have a child following, and they don't have a C-section. They have a vaginal birth. It's really mm -hmm. up to you. You, I mean, you know, uh, like you just said, there's a lot of fear that's put on women around childbirth, but it's really a very natural, and I'm sure the sister, she's had six. I had three. My third one, I, my husband and I uh, delivered ourselves. The midwife arrived maybe a couple of hours later, but we delivered the baby because it's a really very natural process. It is going to happen. Uh, there's nothing that you have to do, you know. Um, it's just a natural thing, you know. Um, so, I, I mean, I thought it was a very beautiful experience myself. And um, But no reason to fear having a child, you know. Mm -hmm. No reason. So that's my contribution. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, it's scary even now that I think that the average woman of any age getting birth from these hospitals. I remember one celebrity, um, Serena, when she had her first child, she was in her late 30s, she had almost like blood issues. Mm -hmm. you know, where it could have failed. She, could have, she actually could have died in the hospital, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, so when we talk about the, what do you call um, the deaths of, of women getting birth or maternal death, I don't know if that's what they call it, Talise, especially what they call it from women that. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. quite sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you get what I'm saying, people, that, yeah, yes. it's, riskier, it's riskier the older you get, especially mm -hmm. if, you, if you have it's your first child. That's why, you know, women feel that they have a lot of time on their hands, and I'm telling you personally, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Especially mm -hmm. if you're giving birth in this institution that we call mm -hmm. hospitals in America. Mm -hmm. You don't have time. You, your better shot is you can, if you can get them a little earlier, you, you have a better chance. But the older you are, you have some decisions to make that should I give birth in the hospital or I'll go the, the alternate route? Because I'm telling you right now, out of the data that was shown right now, and I'm not going to really Google it and post it on the you know, description of the show, that it's, it's already evident that black women have a higher risk of you know, dying in the giving birth much more than other race of women. You know, there's complications, something going on that will either make you severely ill or you could lose your life in giving birth. One or the other is See, very the risky. Biggest thing, let me say yeah. this, brother. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, childbirth is a serious thing, and you need to be about studying your body, what mm -hmm. Is needed to have a healthy baby, what kind of nutrition you need to be taking in, how to eat, how to prepare your food. It is something that is not just having a baby. You have work to do. Mm -hmm. You have work to do because now you are responsible for a new life and you want that life to come in strong and healthy so you want to have the proper nutrients every day in your body for you and your child. And see, you don't have to eat a lot to be to get nutrition. You have to know 
the good, the proper sources for your nutrition and what you're getting out of the food. We eat a lot of empty calories, a lot of food that just creates a lot of fat in the body, and you're not going to get any, any kind of nutrition from that. So it is about preparing yourself to be a mother. You know, uh, I know uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing was an advocate that we shouldn't talk about having children until we're in our mid-30s because we're mm-hmm. mentally prepared and physically prepared, hopefully, you know. And so, um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And sometimes some people now I find that reach that point of age still not prepared. But it's a good yes, parameter that, that the elder laid out during a time when she was still around. And I think in her book she emphasized it more in detail because in this Western world, because we've been unculturalized in the society, mm-hmm. that we don't value life amongst ourselves and even the children that come forth, we bear fruit in this world and it mm-hmm. becomes problematic. So um, let, I want, let me open the next line. If you have any other questions, mm-hmm. call back. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next caller. Who's this? Hey, what's going on, Gary? And what's good? Hi, how are you doing? All right, all right. What's good, so, JYC? Uh, I was listening mm-hmm. a little bit. I just wanted to to, to clarify. Um, are we talking about uh, natural birth versus uh, uh, C-section? Are we talking about uh, uh, home birth versus hospital birth? Personally, personally, I'm just per- talking about home birth. Sometimes you don't okay. have to, de- you know, denounce or degrade or talk about how bad something else is because you're only giving more attention to that. I just talk mm. about me personally. I just like to share the beautifulness and the natural functions of home birth and how wonderful that is. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, for for what I know, because I'm not a woman, so I, I would you know uh, leave that up to y'all that 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 know best. But um, from what I've heard is that yeah, most people vouch for a home birth um the uh in the water underwater or the tub um birth and midwives and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that that's the only thing. I just wanted to clarify what it was because I was hearing, but I didn't know exactly what it was in regards to where, where, what direction. But, um, yeah, I, I, thank you for, the, for, for, for uh, the information, and I'm just listening in. Yeah, and I want to applaud you and all the other women who, have, who said they want to do home birth because I've met a lot of women who want to do a home birth but their man is like, eh, I don't know, we still going to do the hospital because he's, <laughs> he's uneducated about home births or he's scared and he wants the best for his woman, you know what I'm saying? But that is not the best. So I super-duper applaud you for being a man saying that. Yeah, like I, I don't have no children or not, not in a, I don't have any children coming, at, at, you know, in the, in the close realm, but I definitely mm-hmm. – um, you know, if, if 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 when it when that time comes, I would definitely be open to that. And really, um, you know, whatever's I think would be more comfortable for the for for the female, you know, uh, mm-hmm. what because she's the one that's really gonna be going through all the pain and, you know. So what can we do to, uh, uh you know, minimize the the process as far as the 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 painful part of it. And also, what might be the most healthiest uh, a way of, of going about it? So, yeah, I, I definitely, re- you know, respect that, and, and, and you know, hear positive stuff for the most part. Um, you know, when 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 they have a home birth, uh, natural birth. Keep doing yeah, your thing. Yeah, and I, I wanna. I'm mm-hmm. doing. <laughs> and no, I wanna. Yeah, and I wanna say, you know. I don't know if you were on at the beginning, but hospitals are a new phenomenon. You know, the the right. drugs we're given, even Tylenol, you know what I'm saying, it's got 1,500 side effects. We've seen the commercials. Mm. You know, you want to cure that headache? Well, you know, you're going to have arm pain and seizures, and you might die too, but just go ahead and take this pill because it's going to stop that headache. So I think the intelligence that human beings for millions of years and still have around the world certainly supersedes the little medicines and all their toxicness that, you know, the hospitals have to give people for pain. That's really going to cause more pain. 
So there, if I, I would just suggest that if you, you know, but since you don't have a woman now, this is a great time. I don't know if you're into reading, but if you're not, there's plenty of videos online talking about natural ways to alleviate what's called so-called pain. And it really isn't pain. It's just pressure. It's like, for example, if you hurt your hand, you can sit there and say, my hand feels good, my hand, and make your mind overcome, quote, unquote, pain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So mind sometimes you just, exactly, exactly. Okay. So sometimes, you know, we just, it is it, 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 beneficial to us to kind of look at things a different way. You know what I'm saying? There's herbs and stuff. There's herbs people can take right now if you're trying to have an abortion, that are safe. Animals do that. Animals will do that. If they're in the wild, animals will eat certain uh, uh, plants if they know that this is not a good time for them to have a baby in the wild. But animals aren't the only people in tune with plants and stuff like that. There's pressure techniques you can do with your hands, certain um, herbs you can take. There's certain, what is it, uh, aromatherapy, certain things you smell to help you be calm. So it's, it's numerous things that you can do you can do and she can do and the the first beginning is your mind and saying how you even going to approach it in the first place mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so so yep. so you say you have six, six children yes sir i have them all at home and the last two it was just me and my husband wasn't anyone else uh, there but us two Wow, wow. And, and, and was was the, um, well, I would say, I mean, how was it after the first one? So you basically discovered that, it, you know, you found a better uh, uh, procedure or, or, or remedy to not have it so painful as the first one? Because, I, I, I mean, it would be stupid to ask you, oh, the, per- the first one was more <laughs> the painful. But how did and how I, did you go about it? What was was it like smooth sailing after you know the second third child? It was just like you already got it down packed as far as you know uh, going through the process of having a baby, less pain, less uh, uh, you know timing and things like that, and safety, of course. Yes, I will say this: in order to be successful at anything in life, you have to apply what you learn. So you can read all day and half, you know, half do things all day, and then you'll get half results. So with my first child, I had heard about what's called um, hypnobirthing, which is basically putting yourself in a relaxed state. And you can do this for any anyone can do it. You mean a trance? A trance. Putting yourself, not even that, not even a trance, just okay. putting yourself in a deep, relaxed state where you can still hear what's going on, but you're in complete control and nothing is trumping what your brain is thinking right now. Nothing trumps that. And so there are exercises to do that to be able to achieve. It's like, I would say it's just similar to meditating personally. But I didn't do the exercises consistently enough because I was just like, I'm going to have a home birth. It's going to be easy. Woo, woo, woo. I'm not going to do all of the things. And I had the result. At my birth, it was it was... It was drama. <laughs> it was hollering, cussing. And after that, I was like, you know what? I I see all these women having, you know, calm births. They're no better than me. You know what I'm saying? Surely I can not just say I'm better than other people, but if they can do it, I can do it too. That's my personal attitude about life. And so the next time I said, you know what? I'm going to really do those exercises. I'm going to really do the walking every day. I'm going to really do the yoga, every, the, the pregnancy yoga every day. I'm going to really take the time to visualize how I want my birth to be. I'm going to really write down how I want my birth to be every day. And all these things apply to anything you want to do. It's consistency. And being dedicated to say, do you really want it? If you really want it, you'll put in the work to do it. It's like people say, you know, if you really want to spend time with somebody, you're going to make time to spend time with them. If you really want to go to the gym, if you really, really, really want to do it, you're going to go to the gym. Nothing's going to stop you. If you're hungry, you're really going to eat. Nothing will stop a human being from eating if they're hungry enough. Mm -hmm. So you have to use that same mentality for a pregnancy or anything else you want to achieve in your life and say nothing was going to stop me from having the birth I want. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yes, my birth certainly got better and certainly improved because I did the work. 
I read, I did the research, I watched the videos, and I, I, I like to say when you're pregnant, but all the time, really, your mind is like a pregnant woman. So if you think about a pregnant woman, you protect her. You protect, and she protects herself as well and her baby. What she's watching, what she's eating, who she's talking to, she should. If she doesn't, she should, because everything that you're putting into that Matters. baby is making that kind of child and the kind of adult they're going to be right then when they're in your womb. So you have to protect your mind all the time and say, I'm going to control what I'm watching, what I'm eating, what I'm taking in, who I'm talking to. If I want to have a home birth and I start talking to this chick and I say, hey, I want to have a home birth, and she starts going, oh, child, cut. That conversation is done. Right, Are we going to talk about something stressing, else? Stressing the negative energy that, that you don't really exactly. need in that process. Exactly. So when I made the real decision and really decided that's what I'm going to do, that's what happened. My last my last four births, and even with my son, a little for the most part, my son's my second child. It was pretty smooth. Mm. The pressure, the pressure, as it, it, it like like y'all think y'all are men, but you can feel when when the next wave, that women say contractions, but you can feel when the next one is coming. It's not like it's a surprise. You don't know when it's gonna happen. You can feel it coming. So you get yourself in a relaxed state and say, okay, I'm in charge of this body. My body is not in charge of me. So I'm, I know the wave is coming. Let me get on my surfboard and ride this next wave and take my time. And that's what the beauty and the sister Ajua said it. In home birth, you can take your time. There is no rush at your house. You're not on the clock at your house. You're taking your time and allowing you and your baby to be in sync and one so the baby can come when it's ready and when you're ready. Right. Mm. Wow, good information. Thank you. Uh, and keep doing your thing, uh, 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 Gary, dropping, you know, bringing good guests and dropping some jewels, bro. I'm going to sit mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, JNYC. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So a lot, um, Felice. Um, like I, I hope said, I'm not coming on too strong. I'm no, sorry. no, I'm no, 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 no. I'm really this, passionate this, 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 about... This is good. This is good. This is good. Um, if you're never this passionate in any podcast... This is probably the first you're going to be laying it all out. No <laughs> holes bar, no chaser. You know? I never told you this earlier when we talked um, briefly, but I would say you got to lay it all out. You know, If you're passionate, be passionate and be in debt. That's how you have to be. You have to be assertive. You know? And I think if, if I was having an interview with your father, it would be the same thing. He's passionate, but <laughs> logic, with his passion. Too, exactly, you know, because, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, before I open the lines, because I see one, one other person raise a hand, um, I have to say this. Um, and you know what's funny? When I was thinking of dealing with the home birth, I did a, a quick premiere with another wonderful YouTuber named Irene Vet, and she talked about it, the same mm-hmm. for the home birth. Mm-hmm. But that was like a year, almost going on almost two years. It was like a year and a half, a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. a year and a month ago, yeah, when I had it. Actually, no. No, it was two years. Now I'm right because it happened in the 11th of the 18th. Uh-huh. So yeah. So you said 11th and 18th. Yes, it was. Oh, that's 20, my birthday. It was on 2018. <laughs> yes, correct. There you go. Yep. That's when she talked about that when we had to sit down and talk about life. You know, contracts. I think we talk about a lot of things, even birth certificates, because as you know, um, when you get birth at home, that means you have to give some validation to the state that your child is a United States citizen. I don't know how you, what you did in regards to the process of that. If you want to go into detail on that, we've opened this line. Well, I personally, me and my husband personally did, but I do know there are people who decide to not to and go different routes. But we okay. Decided to do it. We're just now learning some of the information about that. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm familiar with it. You're familiar? Okay. Yeah. Because I know it's with um, so a lot of people that, they're afraid to say, you know, how can I show verification that my child is a United States citizen if I give birth home? Simple, you go bring your child to the, to the goddamn hospital. That's simple. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's like this. When people ask these questions, I'm thinking, say, okay, the baby was just born, you know. They're not going to say your child doesn't look like it was born here. They can't really give you that, you know, because yeah, – well, they, they go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say they – and. 
in Atlanta, they have, um, you just write, call up to the birth certificate office, and they'll send you or you can go get a form that's for specific a home birth. So you don't ever have to go to the hospital. You just have the form. You say, you know, I had a home birth. They send you the form. You fill it out. They send it off. They send you a birth certificate in the mail and the social security card, and then you're done. Ah, simple. Ah, look at that. That that and, the, and see a funny thing with Irene. I don't know if she went in detail. Oh, well, she did because it was a long time ago. Um, Talise, because mm-hmm. during your birthday, and I can't recall because I never gone back to that playback. I should have listened to, but she gave certain hints about that. But tonight, you kind of gave a little bit more. Just went straight, straight with it. You know, so they, that's the process you had to go through, and be done with it. So I appreciate yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Let me open this line and see who has a question. All right, hold on. All right, call open line. Who is this? Uh, this is Ottawa. I just wanted to ask okay. this. Well, ask the sister if she could speak to the involvement of the man in the birth process and leading up to it, even but just, I mean, from the conception to delivery, that when you make up your mind to have a home birth, that it really, I mean, the man is fully involved because, I mean, I mean, you're stretching, you're preparing your body, and your husband or man can help you do those things and how it is inclusive of men. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, oh, that's a, that's a big question. <laughs> I want to say that um, it is very important that the man is involved. And I know, you know, from history, it always seems that the man isn't in the hood or in the house or in various places. But what I've experienced in my own personal birth is that it gives a different level of appreciation when the man is in the pool or in the room Mm -hmm. when he sees, you know, what the woman is going through. Like I remember, and I have a chapter in my book for for, um, fathers too and how they should behave as what would be suggested for them to be a good support person when their wife or spouse or girlfriend or whatever is pregnant but mm-hmm. i had an exercise where uh, one time i had my husband have a book carry a book bag in the front and i've seen pictures of men who are you know got watermelon tape to them but we had put a bunch of stuff in it and we to weigh the amount of however many pounds that a baby would be weighing and just walking around he just walked around for a little bit he's like golly i said yeah we're doing that for months and months and months <laughs> mm-hmm. so you know, I think things like that give a man a different perspective. And it also makes a man, anybody wants to continue to follow up with something they've invested with their time and energy. So if you see, you know, I see what this woman has gone through, peaceful, you know, this peaceful experience, but I can see it was a real experience for her to carry this in her body, and I saw it come out of her body. It says, man, I... I, it's not going to be so easy for me to be like, you know, forget y'all, you raise the baby, I'm going to do my own thing. That makes it a little bit more difficult when you've seen that process happen. And to rewind back just a little bit, I think the men and women should be mindful when they're making the baby. It's become kind of, you know, just any old thing. Like, oh, I'm grabbing a sandwich. Oh, you know, I got so-and-so pregnant. Oh, I'm pregnant. I think it should be way more that, that goes into that because whatever's going on when that baby, that moment that baby is made, that is what is starting what has made that baby. So if you're drunk and high, that is what has started to make that baby. If, you know, you're on positive vibrations and positive thoughts and this baby is going to be a leader or a strong, intelligent person, that is what will start making that baby. So what you're saying is very important, but you know, that doesn't happen all the time. So let's say that doesn't happen all the time. Well, luckily you got nine months to do the best you can, what you're watching, what you're eating, who you're hanging around. And if this is your wife or a woman you care about, then, you know, I'm not saying chain her up and lock her up in the basement, but you should be encouraging to help her to do the right thing. So she is only craving because for my fifth child, and this only happened once, I couldn't eat anything. I could eat, but I just didn't have a taste for anything. All I could eat was ranch and potatoes, but my husband would still say, hey, just trying to drink this smoothie. 
You know what I'm saying? Because it has all the stuff in it you need because we're growing a baby. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to, you know, and, 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 and in this chapter for the, for the dads, I also mentioned to the women, you know, don't try to take your man for granted because some women will do that. Oh, I'm pregnant. You know, it's four in the morning. Can you go get me something? It's like, let's mm-hmm. be considerate in your pregnancy. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you're experiencing hormones, and yeah, he don't know what you're going through, but it's also good to be considerate because the times when you, you don't want to cry wolf, the times when you really might need something, you don't want him to be like, man, I, I just can't take it. <laughs> you're on your own with that, with that one. So it's important. It's so important that the family unit, as best as possible, and the grandmas and the aunties and the uncles and everyone that you can be involved, be involved. Because I like to say it doesn't just take a, a village to raise a child. It takes a village to support parents, and it takes a village to help adults keep growing. You don't just, I'm a, an adult, and boom, I'm ready. No, you still need advice and assistance from other people who've already done this. So I would say the man's role in pregnancy and home birth is extremely important. It's just as necessary as the woman who's carrying the baby for him to be there, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get it, Lady Agua? Hey, Gary, can I say something? What are you, Yashua? Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, both you and Agua online. Okay, go ahead, Yashua. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that. I, I apologize for that. Um, no, I, I just wanted to say, uh, was just what I always said was a, was a great point. I was about to call in, I mean, dial six one and say that. Um, the, the way I like guys to look at it, that her pregnancy is also your pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And that's how guys should look at it. Um, and and, and, I, and I, that's how I would look at it if I had, was had, if my wife was having children was about to, uh, you know, bring in life. I, I, I would see it as her pregnancy is my pregnancy, and mm-hmm. and 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 that's how it should be. Um, mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, we have a lot of uh, dudes planting their seed all over the damn place, and they don't see it that way. They see it as I'm just dropping the seed and, and they're moving on. So, mm-hmm. but but um, but that, that's what I wanted to say. But guys, gotta remember if you sincere and serious about life and children and the welfare of your children and if you're serious about the, uh, the welfare how, how your child is going to grow up and be an adult you, you will see that your wife's pregnancy is exactly that is that's also your pregnancy you know what i'm saying right and i i, I know a lot of you both have this macho dumb shit going on excuse my language but they, they have a lot of that shit happening you know where they just macho and they want to not have no feelings and all that dumb stuff so but, yeah, mm-hmm. that's all I wanted to say. That's all I had to say. I agree 100%. I like to say we're pregnant. <laughs> right, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. We are pregnant. It's our it's our baby. We're right, pregnant. Right. You're just doing our, the yeah. outside care of this baby. You're reading to the baby. You're rubbing, you know, the shea butter mm-hmm. on my belly. You know what I'm saying? You're making sure I get the food, the mental food and the physical food that I need and your baby needs. Because right, I, you know, right. then it's like it's something wrong with the baby. Well, did you do your part to help make this a good child? You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 exactly. I agree a hundred percent. Right, right. Yep, that's all I have all to right. say. Thank you, Gary. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's interesting you mentioned about is our baby. I've noticed I could be wrong <laughs> that when it comes to the pregnant process um, before the baby is born or whatever, it makes one or to a lot of women, they don't understand the importance of how unified you have to be with that mate that you select to carry your child. Mm-hmm. The importance of, of it, that mm-hmm. if you want, and not only for the sense of the birth, but just the connection alone, because a lot of males, I'm going to say this personally, some of them, in my mind, don't deserve to be fathers, but that's not a subject, but the ones <laughs> that do, that do, they should get more homage. You know, you had to be as one put your supposition to really have to, you have to connect with your mate, you know, to make a say this is not just something, you know, you had to do things like a woman to make them feel, especially say, you know, this is something that's pressure that what's going to come out is going to be beautiful. You know, certain things women got 
do because men and much times we see it, we have to like actually see you doing it you know process that the caringness you know mm-hmm. you know your mm-hmm. energy has to be different don't make mm-hmm. it seem like that if you were always miserable back then and now you carry a child that your misery with this mate is going to be different no if you carry a certain way a demeanor of yourself it's going to mm-hmm. carry no matter what you are no matter if you bring a life or not it's going to follow you Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a lot of things, mm-hmm. a lot of our men we could do better to a spot off, you know, especially if a woman doesn't have kids, you know, because mm-hmm. we always hear this thing about, you know, some men now, you might not follow this to least because this has been going on, on social media and YouTube for a while now. I'm just giving up to speed how mm-hmm. some dudes create things now say, we don't want to be a cleanup man. You might not know what that is, but <laughs> I'll, go deep, I'll, I'll go in deep. Wow. Time, okay? <laughs> but it's like this. Uh, it's out here. And that, mm-hmm. you know, some dudes that if they don't have kids themselves and they deal with a woman with a kid more than one, it becomes a bad rep because a lot of women today don't really appreciate, you know, the children that they already have brought forth by mm-hmm. the last relationship. So for most dudes, they rather invest if they don't have kids to a woman that doesn't have kids, which is really mm-hmm. logic, and that's the route to go for most men and women. If you don't have a kid, find a dude or a mate. That's kids, and you start the family right there. Start fresh. Draw a connection. Bring the love and energy with someone that does have anything to carry that both y'all could appreciate. That's what always should be going, you know? This should be the way things should be running, you know? Especially now if you look at the average percentage, more than half the male population, especially black males, don't have kids. So it should be no problem for a man to at least find a woman that's almost not at the same percentage rate, but someone that doesn't have kids. So, yeah, make the connection, y'all love and grow, and start a family and move from there, you know? And, you know, that first child, for most women, once they experience that first child, it's going to be very special, mm-hmm. you know? I'm hoping it goes as far as that if you can get it in, like, an actual marriage, even perfect, but everybody's different, you know? But like I said, you want to treat this first time being pregnant for the first time very special, very serious, you know? Yeah, and I think- and I- I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. And going through your book will help the healing process, you know, for a lot of women that don't know what to do if they want to go the natural route, the uh, doula, or go to the hospital. It it, it will ease your decision-making, especially if you're being a first-time mother. I recommend most people buy this book. But go ahead. Oh no, I was I was just saying I definitely understand what you're saying and I would mm-hmm. say that's probably much easier. But you know, I'm I'm as I get older, I'm kind of on, you know, to each his own and mm-hmm. it, you know, cuz some 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 guys don't have a problem with that. They're perfectly fine. You know, they understand mm-hmm. the what's going on in our community where a lot of women, you know, don't have you know, men, some of them because of that they the choices they made, but sometimes the man's in jail or he got killed or different stuff that happened. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's to each his own. And the funny thing, I'm not saying for the women that if they were in a relationship with a mate, if they're married and the husband disease, if he was killed or he died prematurely through illness or in as far as, let's say, um, what's the word, or some other situation happens. Um, like I said, you know, if he's no longer in the life, or he's around, he's gone for whatever reason, then I understand that you move on with life and you find another mate and move on, you know. Right. I'm on, I'm on speaking to the to people, especially women that listen to me now, that if you are already in this entanglement with your mate mm-hmm. and whatever reason you don't want nothing to do with him, you going to have to work that out because mm-hmm. your connection between your children and the actual father is vital for the development, you know. Mm-hmm. You, said, you said personally is a spiritual aspect once you start to deny your other half to help create this life because it takes two halves to make a whole which creates life right and your children are going to feel the effects of it how we know you know at least from the data and what you see from a community is a result of there's a lot of brokenness from a lot of these young males and young females in the development mm-hmm. They not only talk it, but they carry it through action. Mm-hmm. And all that could have been resolved if one or two parents 
play enough role in the development of their son daughters, you know? I'm not saying it has to be perfect, but <laughs> as a man, if you can, try to make it work, you know? If you can't co-parent, then if you have sons, then maybe it's time, like the movie um, Boys in the Hood, you do that route. You take full custody while your son is reaching teenager to show him how to be a man for his other development. You know, I can't speak about the daughters because I know daughters and he both mother and father. I mean, that's another story. But like I said, you have to be involved for either gender as best as possible. Because okay. I, I just don't like how the communities, what we see now, are very much in a chaotic state because these children, they didn't come out of nothing. They were conceived by two people, you know. Now, regardless of how, as a woman, if you're able to maintain a whole man, that's another discussion. But it's by that you keep relationship with that father or the baby daddy or whoever, if he's around. Do not abandon him and discard him like it's nothing. You're doing much hurt, sister, doing that, you know. I understand why would you even do that anyway, because when you want your son and daughters to get the best, to know the best, to be nurtured in any way, fashion, mentally, spiritually, from the other side, whether you like him or not, you do chose him because – he had to be something special for you, him to get a legacy out of you. So treat it as a gem, a jewel, and nurture it the best you can. So we don't have much mental illness with the children that become adults. That's my only take on it, you know. But, yeah. And I agree with that. You know, if I think if, you know, women were supposed to have children by themselves, then they would be able to make babies by themselves. But they're not. You need a man or a sperm to be able to produce a child which signals to me that you're going to need more than just his sperm to make this child a fully developed and a, a good person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree with that. Yeah. And I, I do want to say, I, I, I do want to say this to the, to the um, mothers who are, um, who are uh, on, for, you know, spiteful reasons, not letting their children into their excuse me, not letting the, the fathers into the children's life. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's right either. Because, you know, he can have a relationship with his child and y'all don't have to be connected at all. <laughs> you can mm-hmm. just come pick him up at the door because it's, it's very vital to the child's proper development. Like I was saying, you know, we we need a community to help us still develop, develop after we're adults. So surely a child would need more than just his mother to help, you know, him or her be raised properly. Mhm. Mhm. And and that's my only um, deep message to a lot of people that's listened to this. Um, because we can home birth is vital moving forward in the twenty first century. Rather, most women want to hear it or not, or they don't think it's important. It's going to matter. Trust me. Um, if you know what's going on now with what is potential of the future of us as population people, is very uncertain. But I know one thing we control is how we groom and raise our next kins that's going to come before us. That we have control right. over, you know. Um, right. rather, rather they come through, you know, another relationship or, you know, we, we, we come from a unit from from the man and woman. You know, the, the point is this. Children need some guidance at the end of the day, you know. And they're not going to get this through this system, you know. The television is not going to teach them how to be adults. The Internet and definitely the school system is not going to. And you know firsthand, um, Taliska, you've been trained under your father's the institution. And you get a very different learning experience of what is actual education, you know. They train you in how to think, how to create think, your mind, your health, all the information needed to restore and build a nation. Right. You know? And, you know, I'm getting promotion to your father because, you know, I respect him. So, you know, I'm going to call it the Alcabit Institution a lot tonight, so don't <laughs> mind me. You know. Oh, and if Yasha and um, Yadwa, if y'all know, this is um, the daughter of Ma Broody. This is their only child, if y'all hear me. Yasha? Oh, yeah, anyway. you think so there? Yeah. Yeah, this this is the daughter of yeah uh, of Morale Broody. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, and, and mind yeah. you, I didn't I, I didn't know they had. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody you said, said something. Well, I'm going to take. Hmm. 
I'm yeah, sorry, you got to say it again, Lady Adwa. You said something? What, what's the name? What is her parents' name? His, Ma- his, name, his, his name is uh, Wallamu Barudi. It's M W A L I M Wallamu. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 Um, and and, yeah, and Gary, can I say something, Gary? And, and yeah, go what ahead. I would say, too, as, as far as natural birth, I think, I think that should be the only way for those who can have a natural birth. And, and, and I think most of us can have a natural, I mean, most women should be, I mean, it should be a natural birth. I, I like the natural births better. I mean, I, I don't believe in C-section. Now, some women, have, for some reason, they're convinced that they've got to have a C-section or that they got some medical issue that they can't have a, a vaginal birth. But um, I, I, I like the fact that um, I, I, I believe in natural births. I believe in um, a woman should breastfeed. Um, and, and that's just me. I mean, I, I just think that, you know, you got these things that that God has given you, or what you call God's spirit, whatever you might want to call God, but um, you got these things that are that were given to you, and so you should use them. Um, for, for you know, especially when it comes to birthing. Um, I, I was reading something on um, breastfeeding that they said sometimes uh, when women don't breastfeed their child, that the features of the child is different when they take Simlac milk. It was a very interesting interview but it, it, it was kind of interesting um you know um article i mean um but i i, I believe in uh natural births and i believe in and in, and in that women should uh you know should, should breastfeed their child i mean that's just me um okay i'm okay. I, you know that's what i gotta say okay. all right thank you asha before i take next call uh you know it's a very good thing i never asked this um because you've been uh, um a mother and I believe you're homeschool. Am I right, um, Talise? You do that too? Homeschool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, okay. I do. Okay. One question they're asked, because a lot of women never know, and they always give me different opinions on this. How long do you think it is for a woman to breastfeed their children? What's the lengthy time when they're supposed to take them off the titty? A lot of better words. From your own experience. For me, I would say two months. I mean, not two months, excuse me. Two years is mm-hmm. good. But, you know, people, some people do three years. But for um, my children, I tried to reach two years for everyone. My daughter was two years. My son, I got pregnant with my twins in the middle of his first year. So we didn't make it to two years for him. But the twins, mm-hmm. I did a year. Um, my fifth child, she stopped on her own after a year. And my last child she did two full years oh but okay yeah two years is ideal Mm -hmm. but i i definitely say it's so it's so many benefits for the child and the mother people don't even think about the mother but it's so many benefits for the child and the mother to breastfeed and like i love how you know the caller said that that's what you were giving them for when you get pregnant, your breasts fill up with milk. It's not like optional. You can say, oh, I don't want to get, you know, milk come in. It's going to come in for everybody pretty much. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, of course, well, not of course, but the benefit for the child is health benefits. It builds up their immune system. And the beautiful thing about breast milk is when your child is nursing, if your child, get, the baby is sick, your breast milk will um, rearrange itself, basically so that it provides more of whatever the nutrient or vitamin that baby needs to get healthy. Mm. Also, yeah, also um, for women, I mentioned this earlier, but it helps you snap back. (laughs) So breastfeeding helps you lose weight. Also, it helps get your hormones back in order. So uh, sometimes, you know, after you have a baby, they they talk about postpartum depression. And that's when, you know, you might be really sad or, you know, have be depressed of some nature, you know, after you have a baby. But breastfeeding helps with that. So it's, it's numerous benefits for both the baby and the mother for breastfeeding. It's not just, oh, I'm feeding my baby and then that's that. It also creates a bond to that baby that you wouldn't have normally. All my children slept in the bed with me. 
I, I'm really close to my children. Now, they're all small, but I know that I've laid a good foundation for us to all be close. And, oh, wait, let's not mention the cost. It's free for me to roll over or wherever I am to just lift my shirt and nurse my baby versus I got to get the bottle. I got to get the Similac. I got to shake it up. I got to make sure it's the right temperature. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the night, can you imagine you just had a baby, you're exhausted. Now you got to get up and do all these things versus you just roll over and nurse your baby. It just makes mental sense to me. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, these are the discussions that a lot of people don't really have. You know, they think, say, oh, I don't want to do all that. Why I got to sit there and put the baby on the teddy? Well, I got to go back to work. You know, it's, and you know why most of them are so stressed that they deliberately stress themselves out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just, right. just lift up your shirt, pull up, wear a bra if you're not wearing a bra, and put the baby on the titty. It's that you simple. Can, you can do that anywhere. I, I seen a woman in line the other day at Walmart. She's stressing. She's, you know, fidgeting in line because she's trying to buy some Similac, and she's like, hurry up so she can get the car. And a lot of these babies are crying and having upset stomachs because their bodies weren't made to digest that kind of material yet. It's poison. Similac breast has... milk, mm -hmm. exactly. It's certainly poison, but the breast milk is made for your particular baby. Mm -hmm. And maybe some men don't even know this, and I think some women don't even know this. And like Sister Audrey mentioned, we don't know about our bodies. We're just, we're just ignorant about our bodies. Breast milk is sweet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very sweet. It's like ice cream, really. And Ooh. so the thing is, <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's not like, you know, you're sitting there, oh, I'm feeding my baby, and they're, they're not enjoying it. It's soothing. It's not only feeding them, but it's soothing and relaxing for your baby. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this woman is stressing out, like, you know, she got to hurry up and do this. I'm like, man. What is it? Save thousands by switching to breast milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Save stress by switching to breast milk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. You save time, stress, all that. But like I said, in this environment, we have to be denaturized. You know, we have to be, things got to be foreign. And like you said, and, and let's keep it 100. A lot of women nowadays, they feel, oh, I'm not going to do that in front of public. Oh, yes, you are. If, if you want your baby to stop crying. But I know most women say people are going to be staring. They should be staring. That's Eurocentric thinking. See, people got the history, and you would know this person, at least because you read enough history from the Akaba Institution, how the European, when they look at the African woman body, they look at it in a sexual manner, how they want to ravish, take it, you know. It's very uh -huh. much pedophilic, rapist type of thinking, these people. Mm -hmm. And they train the average African man woman to think in that same manner as well. Um, unfortunately, you know, but right. we don't, we don't understand the nature of the beast. When you're in this environment, you have to think backwards. Everything that you think they're doing correct, you have to do the opposite. You know? Right. And we see billboards and movies, you know, everywhere where women, you know, breasts are hanging out. You know, but if someone's nursing, who's covered up? I see women who are, have a cover over their, their self and their baby, and mm -hmm. people are still looking crazy. It's like they're actually eating. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, because some dudes, some women will think that, oh, this dude's going to cough a field. Well, you don't worry about that. You're feeding your baby. You know? Because think about it. This, and, and think about it. Even in the West Indies and Parsic, African country itself, they still do this. I think they still do this. I could be wrong. I travel up there to know for myself. But it's no custom that, you know, they still do the old traditional way of nursing children. Here, everything's so backwards. And the secret thing about the Similac, and people don't know if they research it personally, Similac has, from what it said, certain chemicals that's compound that makes heroin. I think um, the thing that makes the cocaine that people do time and lock up, the bike product chemicals are in them. Because I know people steal those same Simlex in the stores to make the drugs. Right. So you're feeding the same chemical that got an average black man locked up in prison doing 10 to life. Right. And they, they with well, the pharmaceutical, the FDA, all these institutions have it sell on the market for you to feed your children. 
Ain't that something? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So you you already chemically induce the minute you come out the room. They tell you, say, don't feed your child this. Feed him this. And you can tell how it's dangerous because it makes your child addicted to the Similac. It doesn't exactly. want the titty. Exactly. They don't understand that you are feeding your child poison already. He doesn't even got the option to live like for a few years not eating any poison besides the food, and that's not a story. Well, you're feeding it right off the bat, and you're not even questioning that. Exactly. But you know, what, you know why that, you're, not, you're not questioning? Because a lot of the average woman today got to work and not thinking about staying home, nursing for the first year or two. Because, you know, and I know there's stories that, you know, because America and the average income for black people is different, that's why it's not possible. And I'm thinking, well, if the man is already out there that you feel is your provider, your protector, and he's working, let him fall on his sword. If he if he tells him, say, I'm probably going to say I'm risk and nurse his child, he should have no problem trying to keep the roof and pay the bills if he's not doing that already. If he can't, doesn't want to take on that burden, ladies, I'm going to say it personally, you pick wrong on the average. Because men should have no problem saying, all right, I got this. If I had to work more than one job, I'm going to try to get through for you to so my child become all right while you're at home nursing our son or daughter. That should not be a problem for the average man. And to be honest with you, the average brother today, because they don't think like that, because they've been trained too long. So it is what it is. Um, but I think that is the last but that's I think that's my only question. Hold on, let me check some. Hold on a second. Oh, and for the call number for more time too, that's calling in is okay. You know, we're not gonna ask them a question because I think I passed the time and I think we cover enough, am I right, police? Yeah, we, we covered a lot. <laughs> okay. We covered a lot. Uh yeah, I, I, oh and one other thing I did want to say. Before we did, um, before I created the show, or you know, in advance, I try to reach out to a few women on my Facebook page, and a lot of them did not respond to no question about home birth. And I find it that this is the mindset of a lot of our women because we've been very much westernized. They're not thinking about not giving birth at home if they have to. They feel the only way if they got children it has to be in the hospital. And I, I was very sad to tell you that, police. Oh, that's all right, and that's that's what inspired me to write my book. And I want to remind everybody: is home is where the birth is. The stories of my six home births and how mm-hmm. you can do it too. And it's just you know telling my stories of how I had all six of my children at home, mm-hmm. and it's just a different a different approach you can have to having your children. A different choice that you can mm-hmm. take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's, there's choices. So I, I didn't stress it. I didn't really worry about it. I know it said I'm doing the, the stream regardless, and people are going to have to catch the replay of this and take notes and get the book personally, which I recommend people get the book. It's a very good read. It's 100 and I'm pages, real simple, you know. I will leave the description of the book for you to get. And, um, Talise, do you want to give any other information for people to reach you, if possible? Yes, you can reach me on my website at www.police, P-A-L-I-S-E, homebirthqueen.com. I'm also on Facebook, Talise Homebirth Queen, and I am on Instagram at Talise the Homebirth Queen. So I'm available. I check my um, inboxes very often. So. Mm. Okay. You know, the book came out, was it a month ago, I think? No, it's been out for um, about two years now. Oh, why did Amazon say something different? I probably was looking at something wrong. Anyway. No, that's what Amazon says. It had been re-uploaded, so that's why it's saying that. But, oh, so this book's been around for a while. Okay, that's good. That's what's up. And this is during the process of your last child? That's yes, after I book? had my last daughter. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, since you had twins, did you have to breastfeed on one or both with twins? I breastfed, I breastfed both of them at the same time a lot of times. Okay. So the body, like you said, adjusts to 
what you have. So if you have twins, it's going to require to produce the necessary nutrients on both ends. Because I heard when you have one child, normally one chest will put out the nutrients and the other will put out the toxins. That's what I heard. That's what I remember. I don't know if that's a very bad fact. I have never heard that at all, so I can't speak on that. I've never heard yeah. that. Yeah. I I have to look that up again. But anyway, um, that's good enough. Um, thank you, Talise, for coming on and being my guest for the first time on here on this podcast. I'm not sure if this is the first time you've done interviews. You say you haven't. You've done some before. So, you know, I'm hoping this one was worth your while and your time. <laughs> thank you for having me. I really enjoyed, you know, talking with you, answering the questions, and engaging with the callers. I really enjoyed myself. So thank you for having me. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. And any other future um, books or anything, just hit me up, and, you know, we'll, we'll come back again and do it again. Is that good? That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. All right, all right. Thank you, Talise. Um, we'll talk again soon. Take care now. All right. Good night. Yes. And I like to thank all the callers for listening to today's stream. Everyone, y'all, respect and love all y'all. Um, this is very much a very good year um, of what I'm doing so far on podcasting. And it's almost, actually, it's marking almost the fifth year since I've been doing podcasts all together. I think when I do the next show, um, I probably will say, and dedicated uh, almost five years. Um, but like I said, um, this was a good stream. For those that missed this broadcast, you can go back to the replay of this on Chaos Rain channel. And the links where you could find the book title, Home is Where the Birth Is with Talise. And her social media, and all other links I will put into the description of the show. And that's pretty much it. Thank you again for listening to tonight's broadcast. Until next time, take care and good night. Thank you again for listening to another broadcast. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Talise Home Burbs. Um, For all women that is, I would say, 18 and up and is trying to learn more or have an alternate way of giving burps to their own children, check her out, check her website, and purchase the book titled Home is Where the Birth Is on Amazon. The links will be in the description of this stream. Comment, subscribe, and like this video. You can also follow me on Twitter at KiosRain7. Thank you for listening. Until next time, let it chaos rain.